One of the things that I've noticed is that over time, it's been more and more difficult to get spirited political debates out of people in my community because we've been doing this for long enough that the people in my community generally have like good political takes, or at least they align with mine. All right. This does not apply to media takes. Now, as somebody who's very not mad, all right, here I was about to go to sleep and I saw this shit ass Reddit thread where people had the audacity to be incorrect within my sight lines. So I just thought that I, while not mad, would take some time to debunk every single thing said in the entire thread. So the Reddit thread is entitled, Vosh's media takes getting so bad they're good. Off to a excellent start. Let's, let's, let's get started. I'm honestly starting to enjoy how self-contradictory they are. Within two minutes, he says Mario Sunshine, a game infamous for tedious and bullshit 100%ing, is better at that aspect than Odyssey a game with literally no 100% mechanic that can be completed easily by anyone without a guide or anything tedious. This is wrong on so many levels that it is genuinely embarrassing that you had the confidence to type this out. First of all, how is the ease of completion for Odyssey relevant to 100%ing it? Yeah, you can complete Odyssey in no time. It's got like 880 moons. 100%ing it is a totally different ballgame. I don't know why you're bringing up that it can be completed easily when we're talking about the 100% mechanics. Also, if you sincerely believe that Mario Odyssey is more tedious and time-consuming to 100%, or sorry, that Mario Sunshine is more tedious uh, to 100% than Super Mario Odyssey, you are genuinely insane. As somebody who has 100%ed both Sunshine and Odyssey, okay, I can tell you with great confidence. Well, I, don't, I don't know, did you watch the Donkey video? Are you familiar with the Pachinko Machine and lily pad levels? Is that what you think is bullshit? Okay, trust me, it doesn't even come close to the amount of tedium you have to deal with in Odyssey. I have no idea why you're, you're, you're acting as though Sunshine has more non-essential bullshit fuck around collection mechanics than Odyssey does. It doesn't. It just doesn't. The vast majority of the stuff you're doing in, in a Super Mario Sunshine is getting the shines, okay? In Odyssey, there's like 5 million things to do in every kingdom, and a lot of them are bullshit and boring. This is just a fact. You're wrong if you disagree. That's not subjective, okay? If you seriously think that Sunshine is more tedious to 100%, you're wrong. Then, in the same two minutes, he talks about why handcrafted maps are better, and his example is Diablo 2 versus 4. Except, obviously, 4 has a handcrafted map and 2 doesn't. You fucking buffoon. I was talking about the way the map was designed. Diablo 4's map is tedious because it's a gigantic, sprawling mess of a map that has 5 million copy-pasted dungeons and little thingamadoobobs to collect in 100% all over the place. Diablo 2 doesn't. I have acknowledged before, and talked about, how Diablo 2 and 3 have ran well, and 1, have randomization in levels that you progress through. But what I mentioned was, even if the Blood Moor or the whatever, you know, whether Diablo 2 levels are called, you know, even if they have randomized elements in their construction, they're reliable in what you get in access there. In addition, Diablo 2 and 3 didn't really have the same kind of tedious map completion elements because, again, the maps were randomized, meaning that you couldn't do a bunch of bullshit 100% completion across the maps because, again, they would regenerate the next time you opened up the world. That wasn't really a feature of those games. There was to an extent when it comes to achievement hunting, but that's not so much map design as it is, you know, game design. So, no, we weren't talking about whether they were handcrafted or procedurally generated. We were talking about the level of tedium built into the way the worlds were designed, okay? And if anyone can agree, all right? Nobody plays through Diablo 2 or 3 in a tedious way. You don't hug every wall of every map because you're terrified of missing out on some map icon you would have otherwise missed, okay? The only thing there can be in an area is one, two, or three little mini dungeons to go through, or maybe the waypoint that you find. And once you find that, you don't have to find it again. 
It's not like Diablo 4's map, where it's gigantic and there's a billion things to do. By the way, go to the Diablo subreddit and you will find literally tens of thousands of people complaining about full completion for the map. They will talk about how burnt out they are because the map is gigantic and it has so much shit to do in it. And a lot of that shit is like repeat content. You can literally, you can go there. Trust me, I followed the discourse, okay? I'm not the only one saying this. My opinion on Diablo 4's map being like dull and tedious in this way is not a controversial one. It's also not a contrarian one. It's literally the mainstream opinion of the kinds of people who care enough about games to whine about it on forums, okay? I don't know what, like, ooh, you, you haven't played these games. You have no idea what you're talking about. You fucking imbecile, okay? You fucking buffoon. Earlier, he's personally criticizing everyone in his audience for liking slop. No, you are insecure, okay? And I hope my criticisms don't cause you to kill yourself because you have insecurity issues. I did not criticize everyone for liking slop. I said we have to identify whether or not things are slop, and I said that I consume it too. I did not say if you consume media that fits this set of definitions, you are bad. I said I think we should be aware of when media fits these definitions or descriptions because we shouldn't be cynically preyed upon by like cheap corporate media construction tactics. However, we all do it, including me. So I know that you listened to that and you thought, oh my God, I personally am being attacked because my weak fucking ego can't handle uh, uh, opinions being delivered by a person who doesn't agree with me on everything 100%, but like, holy shit, listen to what I'm talking about, please. Then later, apparently, I pivot to, quote, it's just my personal opinion, don't get defensive, uwu. Yeah. Don't get defensive. And I didn't say uwu. It's not my fault that I have to softly tread with you whiny fucks. I would be twice as contentious with my goddamn media takes if it weren't for the fact that I can be contentious all I want with the political takes, but with the fucking media takes, oh, I have to walk on eggshells because you guys have so much of your identity is defined by the media you consume and you get so offended when I criticize it, even when I say stuff, which I say constantly, by the way, like, you can enjoy it if you want. You're free to enjoy it. It's dude, personal taste, whatever. I'm only encouraging critical thinking, which obviously you're incapable of because you said like five objectively incorrect things in the opening message. But this is just the opening post. We need to look at the comments. And while I'm not mad, you know, that doesn't mean I don't want to be thorough in my response. He's driven by ego. And whatever he thinks makes him sound smarter than the normies, he'll shit on. Look at this just dripping with insecurity right here. He, he, he's on his ivory horse. He, he, he's, it's all ego to him. He, yeah. Something like Red Dead Redemption 2 because he thinks it's popular. Thus, normie Joseph Anderson, by and large, considering kind of a... Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. What is the syntax? Wait, what? He's driven by ego and whatever he thinks makes him sound smarter than normies, he'll shit on. Something like Red Dead Redemption 2 because he thinks it's popular. Thus, normie Joseph Anderson is by large considering kind of a joke, to be honest. What dog walked across the keyboard to make the... How do I even... What? What the fuck are you talking about? Literally, this is the top reply. 115 points. Wow. Just sending your best. Just... Just sending your best, man. Just sending your best. Oh, yeah. that Quality fucking discourse from my subreddit. I oh, Nothing but the best from you guys. Because you know, the kinds of people who go to Vosh V and then go to complain about my media takes in a thread like this are just going to be the cream of the crop. By the way, Ubisoft just proved you right with the upcoming Star Wars game. Star Wars Outlaw map and planet size compared to Assassin's Creed. Upcoming Star Wars Outlaws has its open world compared to Odyssey, one of the largest... Is, is it just like another gigantic super ultra map? Yeah, it's another Ubisoft game. It's going to be a gigantic super ultra map with a million copy-paste things across it. Because every game is like this now. Every game. Every game. <clears throat> TBH, this is a pretty common thing on the left. What is? This is incoherent. The hipster and contrarian urge are strong. Hipster? I'll take the contrarian label, but hipster? For liking Dark Souls? One of the most popular games? Okay, sure, whatever. You can think that if you want. I'll take, I'll t is it the beard? It's the beard and the glasses. It's the beard and the glasses. 
also explains why so many lefties come to despise democracy and embrace authoritarianism. Being a hipster contrarian is not much different from being a contemptuous elite. Oh, took all of three comments. Thank you, Vashvi. Took all of three comments to go from Vosh's media takes are bad to his media takes are indicative of him having the same attitude as contemptuous elitist towards the proletariat. Oh, just, just fucking great. You guys are so fucking smart. When he was talking about Red Dead Redemption 2, what did he say about it that makes you think he was trying to be contrarian, didn't have actual criticism? He doesn't even know the game, lol. Like, half the shit he says wasn't even remotely related to the game. I said one thing about Red Dead Redemption 2, and it's that the exorbitant amount of money put into its development would make me think I'd rather have seen that money invested elsewhere especially when that money goes towards hyper-fidelity stuff, like reaching for goods in cabinets and reaching for them individually rather than them just being teleported to your inventory. That is the only thing I said about Red Dead Redemption 2. That is a statement I am objectively correct on. That is a thing that can be done in Red Dead Redemption 2. Many people have talked about how Red Dead Redemption 2 was A, expensive, and it is, and B, has a level of graphical and realistic fidelity that exceed the norm for most AAA video games. That's not controversial. All I said was that I think the money could be better spent elsewhere. A common sentiment. Have you ever seen that Sonic image where somebody says, I want people to be paid more money to make shorter games that co or like whatever that is? I'm just saying that. I don't know what the fuck you're referring to here. That's why he's leaning into the shit on open world games angle so hard now. Or, or maybe I just have a strong opinion on open world games and the way they tend to be designed. Maybe. Maybe I just sincerely have an opinion on the subject. You know? There are open world games that I've enjoyed. I liked Tears of the Kingdom. I loved Elden Ring. Those are open world games. I, I don't hate them for the sake of hating them. I just have criticisms about the way these trends have developed in gaming. But you can't handle that, huh? You can't handle that. Even that's too much for you. Even uh, even me even me saying, oh, you know, four out of five, but I wish they dial it down with the copy-paste content. That's too much. That's contrarian. What's the thing that got downvoted below threshold? Re, Vosh doesn't like my favorite game, Re. This guy know, knows what he's talking about. He was kind of being a cranky little bitch today. That's true. I can't deny that one. Facts. Just today, seems like he's always on one. Do you guys watch Hassan? I'll acknowledge that I was cranky today, but if you seriously think that my mood is, like, noteworthy for being cranky compared to other political content creators, um, you really need a perspective refresh. I think I'm pretty uplifting for the most part. Even now, when I'm genuinely kind of mad, I'm still mostly acting with levity. I don't really get, like, angry, angry, the way some people do, where they lose sense of their faculties and just kind of, like, buzz out. Uh, I've never been like that. I think I'm okay. But let's not, let's not overstate the case here. We can say I was cranky today. Let's not overstate the case. Take the dub and walk off. They don't. He seems to not sleep well. And yeah, yes, I have consistent problems with sleep. It's... It's been a problem my whole life. It's difficult to deal with. Thank you. And then right once he wakes up, he streams and makes not sleeping well everyone's problem. It's a bit annoying. Well, well, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the hours of free content that you get where, I, where I, I'm not literally perfect and I have faults in my life that are reflected in creative... And informative content that I produce. I am sorry. I'll try to do better for you. Dude probably has sleep apnea. It doesn't even. I know I have sleep apnea. Thank you. All right. It's clear Vosh hates games that have open words and open ends. He likes being guided and handheld to the very end and then told, quote, you are done now like the bottom he is. Half of this is a joke, the bottom bit, but I'll respond to the fundamental criticism here. I don't actually like handholding at all. I mean, one of my favorite game series is Dark Souls, and that series is famous for not handholding 
What I don't like is aimless open-endedness. Open-endedness that feels purposeful and deliberate and constructed and well-crafted through to the end. I like that a lot. One of my, well, no, my favorite game ever is Pathologic 2. And Pathologic 2 is both not hand-holy at all and very open-ended in both a narrative and gameplay sense. I don't dislike open worlds. I've enjoyed many games with them. I just don't like it when people uh, give you a big box of Legos instead of a game. Legos are nice and all, but let's be real. Most open world games aren't Legos. Most open world games don't have the privilege of being Tears of the Kingdom. Most open world games are just a big open field with enemies that level scale to you, so there's not even a consistent set of progression routes, and you just wander around doing stuff or picking a thousand berries that have been scattered across the field. Does running around the world of Horizon Zero Dawn picking berries enchant you? Is that what we play games for? So that between location A and location B, you have to zigzag across a big open featureless field, making sure you gather all of the incremental little itty bits of crafting materials that you'll need for your next conflict? No, that's not why I play games, and it's not why you play games. Stop pretending you like it. You don't. You don't like it. People complain about this stuff consistently. If you like leisure or casual play in games, there are ways to achieve that without letting developers artificially inflate the playtime of every single video game by skewing a bunch of pseudo RPG elements across it. Why do you guys think RPG elements, or I should say pseudo RPG elements, became so popular in video games around like the mid or to, I guess early 2010s and onward? Or or why open world games, now that every CPU can easily handle big open environments, now that they're super popular, like why? Even if it's the same type of game, why? You know? The answer is obvious from an economic perspective. It's because they're trying to pad game length. Obviously. Why do you think studios do that shit? Now, sometimes it's fine, but oftentimes it's really tedious and really uninteresting and really unfun to play through. Why am I getting criticized for pointing this out? This is like a standard anti-corporate greed take. I just want them to make good art. Should, should, should I? It's, 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 like, it's like I'm sitting through like Marvel movies and they're getting longer and longer and longer. I just come out of like a three hour and 40 minute Marvel movie where like, 80% of the content is like quips between two characters alone in a room with like a backdrop that was done in CG. And then like I complain about the filler and people are like, well, I like the jokes. I don't care if you liked the jokes. That doesn't change the criticism. That doesn't, that doesn't change the math involved here. Things are different now. We have to be aware of that. Yeah. A lot of these games really do try to bait engagement through FOMO or through like baiting completionist sentiment with no care or effort or interest put in at all. Ubisoft is still the worst at this, but plenty of games try to hit this on a fundamental level. <sighs> it's just, I just, this is why I say that I'm good at media critique. It's not, the purpose of media critique is not to arrive at opinions that agree with the ones you already have. You're a coward. The purpose of media critique is to be able to critically engage with stuff. That's it. If my conclusions are totally different from yours, great. But at least understand where I'm coming from, okay? Bosh, I don't think you're wrong, but what's the point of padding game length if you're not doing microtransactions? First of all, a lot of them are. And second of all, the longer they have you hooked on their game, um, the more invested you get in just the overall work and products they do. But that's one of the reasons why you see so many... Um, uh, season passes, you see so many season passes, you see so many um, uh, like constant updates in DLC, you talk about it more, which drives engagement for the game, which means more people are likely to get it on it. Like social media, a lot of it is the development of social media too, right? Where now if you play a game for a long time, you, you are more likely to talk about it with other people and that drives them to the game. Uh, also, studios love to brag about gameplay time. Wasn't there recently a, a game that they were advertising? It was like Dead for Daylight 2 or some shit. Uh, like 500 hours of content. It does not have 500 hours of content. Fuck you. Um, okay, let's get back to molding about the Reddit thread. Dead by Daylight, Dying Light, I don't care. Fucking zombie games. Why do you think your community overwhelmingly thinks you have bad media takes, Vosh? Um, I, I, I genuinely just think it's insecurity. My community skews heavily towards like STEM nerds and like gamer geeks and like, great, I am too, whatever. 
Um, but like, man, you guys are seriously fucking insecure. Okay, like you need to get over yourselves. I'm sorry if you disagree with me on some shit. That's fine. I've never. When have I ever been bothered by people saying they like Minecraft? Even if I don't like Minecraft, that's never. Literally, I've never gone off on somebody for that. What I get off on people, get off on. What I go after people for is when they get angry at me for the logic that I use to explain how I feel about games. That's what that's what gets me, man. That's the thing that bothers me. It's 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 anti-intellectual. It betrays a lack of, of of willingness to engage in critical thinking. And I will intellectualize over this. I am willing to be the kind of person to go, oh, well, you don't get the point I was making, so you're less of a person. You're less of a person, dead man posting. I know you're dead man posting because a living man would have had enough neural activity to not post this trash. This was the top comment. I don't know what it means. I will judge you. I don't judge you for liking Minecraft. I will judge you for posting this. Okay? Major Tom, you said like 20 retarded things earlier today, and you've done it again now, and goodbye for a week. There we go. Bosh, you've ever had somebody in your community change your mind on a media opinion? In my community, no. But my media opinions change all the time, like constantly. My media opinion on Mario Odyssey shifted massively when I stopped thinking of it as a platformer and started thinking of it as a um, collectathon. Before that, I was quite negative about Super Mario Odyssey. What good is a platformer where like 90% of the content that you do has nothing to do with platforming and is just wandering around a little toy box world trying to find whatever's sparkling so you can ground pound it? That's not really platforming. If that's platforming, then fucking Dark Souls is a platformer. You run around in that too. No, obviously not. Um, the platforming challenges are in the minority for that game, but, you know. Anyway, let's keep going. That's why I'm surprised he got through Breath of the Wild. I played Tears of the Kingdom, not Breath of the Wild. I think he said he never finished Breath of the Wild once while talking about Tears of the Kingdom. That is correct. Or a game where the developers put thought into map layouts to give people a deliberate and well-crafted experience, not just run around a sandbox looking for bullshit. Thank you, Cliff Springy. Smart brain. Big brain. Big, big brain. Smart brain. Sorry, I am tired of open world games that go, quote, look at all there is to do to explore and loot. And then you go into copy-paste building and slightly different compass orientation 230 and loot three bandages and a weapon you have had better since 42. True! This is so true. Man, there is nothing that I love more than a big giant open world where you're mechanically incentivized to explore all of it for all the little crafting materials and ammo that you want, but so much of it is worthless that it doesn't even feel that worthwhile, but you know there's a slight chance of finding something worthwhile. So the it's like the game is simultaneously encouraging and discouraging you from doing something. Almost like it's incentivizing you to do something, but then making it unfun. Great game design. I love it. Ever since his trying to listen to music arc, I've started dismissing anything Vosh says regarding media, even if I agree. I just find his takes to be ridiculous. Like when he complained a popular game is bad, but a less popular game is good despite having similar design mechanics. Source? Source on this? What are you, what are you talking about? What, 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 what games? What, what is this in reference to? I don't even know what this is in reference to. Vosh has like no music opinions. That's correct. I am so musically illiterate that I don't even make an attempt to give like prescriptive musical opinions. I know plenty about video games though. I've started dismissing Vosh, uh, Vosh's media takes too. Even if we agree on something being good or bad, I feel like there's a decent chance his reasoning for his opinion is way off base from my own. Holy shit. This is like literal anti-intellectualism. This person is saying, even if I agree with him, I don't like the logic he uses to arrive at it for a subjective media taste. Do you know what the point of criticism is? The whole point of criticism, especially for media, where we're not weighing giant moral opinions on the issue, is to try to learn something from the ways in which other people engage with and learn and inspect media. What do you, like, this is, this is like the height of anti-intellectualism in the context of media critique. That, this is like a weird thing to say. Does everyone watching this right now understand why this is a weird thing to say? I don't listen to this person's opinions on media critique because their opinions are different from mine. Even when we agree, I won't listen because I think the way they arrived at that agreement is different from how I got there. Are, 
do you lack curiosity? Are you are you fund are you like an NPC? Do you fundamentally just not like information? I don't understand. If I like a piece of media, like I don't know, what did I play last? Pikmin three, and somebody else likes it, but they like it for different reasons. That usually fills me with intrigue, because then I'm thinking, oh, maybe there's a different perspective that I can take when looking at this game that I like. Maybe there's something I can learn. Maybe I can grow as a person. I recently watched a few videos from a YouTuber whose name I think is Scruffy or Scuffy, perhaps, who was doing a deep dive into the music design of Pikmin. And it was really interesting. I don't know that much about musical theory. And he was talking about some pretty high-level stuff, at least by my standards. Um, but the way he talked about all the depth and effort uh, that went into constructing the boss music for Pikmin 3, I was, I was really, really taken by it. Um, I'm still not much of a music guy, but it's nice to have different perspectives. You're retarded. This person agrees with me that this person's retarded, which is good. Uh, Minecraft, Juzor! Minecraft sells weeping, seething, and gnashing their teeth. Very true. I was playing Minecraft while listening to him talk shit about it and just thinking, good thing I don't care, Lamau. Good. That's a good attitude to take. Yeah. If I don't like Minecraft, but you do, don't let me detract from your enjoyment. That's fine. I That's so okay. Jesus. I'm not trying to take that away from you. I'm, I've explicitly said otherwise. Giga Chad, true. Thanks for telling us about it, though. Minecraft soundtrack for the win. Last time I played Minecraft, it was in beta. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Some shit here. Bosch likes Dune. The new Superman anime. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it. I think it looks cute. One Piece. I love One Piece. And fucking Warhammer. I don't think it's fair to call someone a contrarian when they've explicitly expressed their love of popular media. I, listen, I will, I will acknowledge that I am a contrarian in one respect specifically. And that is that if I feel like everyone is taking a given position on a, a piece of media, I will try to look for uh, and elevate like contrary opinions. So if I generally like Tears of the Kingdom and I'm asked to talk about it, I will criticize it because I don't think it's that interesting for me to talk about all the great parts of a game where everyone is already talking about the great parts. You know, I think it's good to talk about the less discussed stuff. In this respect, I feel like I sympathize a lot with H Bomber Guy because H Bomber Guy, who is a real contrarian, by the way, like an actual proper real contrarian Star Wars prequels, um, he does this a lot. And I, I think it's good, right? Um, it, it's good to take a different approach when talking about something that's generally popular or generally unpopular. I, I like that. Um, I don't think I'm a contrarian in the sense that I will just like fake my positions or automatically disagree with the majority. He calls himself a contrarian. Also, right after I said he was abrasive and authoritative, he called himself both of these things on stream, so I'm clear on both of those. Well, I know that I'm abrasive. I'm authoritative because... I'm the streamer and I'm talking authoritatively. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm trying to make objective statements on this stuff, except when I call everyone in this thread dumb. He likes some popular things. It's not a defeater to the contrarian allegations. They talk about the Superman anime. My headcanon is that he needs to filter all his stupidity into something so it doesn't poison his actual work. So he makes consistently horrible media takes I, listen, I, I'm not biting this bullet. I genuinely think that my media takes are equal in quality and in introspection to like any game analysis channel you can find on YouTube. Uh, you guys don't like it when it comes from me because uh, I come across as more abrasive than a lot of them. And unlike H Bomb, I don't like cushion people's perspectives with two hours of like leading. You know, I just say the stuff that I think. But I, I think that the logic that I use to get to these positions is just fine. I'm happy with it. Um, in order to save all the rightness for things that actually matter, like political advocacy. Nothing else makes sense at this point. They're always so irrational and emotionally driven. Source? That he doesn't even seem like the same person we see in the main channel content? This is Cope. First of all, if you sincerely think that I act differently when talking about media as opposed to politics, then you're delusional. I am so consistent in everything that I talk about. That's because I don't play a bit when I'm streaming. I, I, I act exactly the same way when I'm off stream as I do on stream. Uh, I act the same in all cases. 
it's it's the exact same thing. I I don't know why you would think like, do you think I'm not abrasive and authoritative when talking about politics? I don't understand. Also, irrational and emotionally driven about what? Come on. Really. I think you might actually be onto something. I always try to have sound logical opinions on politics and even some media, but I use sports as an outlet to just say whatever the fuck I want. Okay. Sunshine is terrible unless you're nostalgic for it. Super Mario Sunshine is not terrible. What are you guys talking about? It's an excellent game. It just has some serious flaws, as do all of the major Mario games, except for maybe Galaxy 1 and 2. Um, that's, it's not terrible. It's, it has problems. It's not terrible. Sunshine better than Odyssey? Um, I probably like Sunshine better than Odyssey. I'd say that, yeah. Odyssey obviously feels way better and has more stuff in it and blah de blah de blah but when I'm playing Sunshine, I'm playing Sunshine in the levels where I'm doing the platforming, and most of the time I spent with Odyssey was just faffing around bullshit, so, you know. That's what I remember. If you fill a game with a bunch of, like, uh, you know, chaff along with the wheat, then people are going to remember chaff. Now they're talking about Mario Sunshine. A genuinely good media take of his is that Death Stranding is good. Yes. I'm not judging his taste. People can like what they like. It's his media analysis skills that are hilariously bad. Cope. I honestly don't mind his taste either. Him not liking the games he liked was fine. It was when he started saying it was capitalism and corporations' fault. Like, he thinks it's capitalism and corporations' fault. He doesn't like critically acclaimed games. Oh, fuck, bro. No. Really? You really don't think there's some kind of anti-capitalist critique that you could make for uh, developers deliberately choosing game design strategies that like over-inflate playtime with, with, with like media mediocre tedium? Like you you don't think there's anything there to like capitalism and corporatism when I'm talking about how expensive Red Dead Redemption Two was or the way they designed Diablo Force Map or how Ubisoft does all their shit? Come on. And then proceeded to insult people's intelligence if they defended those games by saying they unironically like slop. I literally said that I have consumed slop. I just encourage people to be thoughtful about it. I did not insult people's intelligence. I'll insult yours, though, because you aren't even willing to engage in the process of, of self-critique for this. That a corporation made to profit off them is where I started getting annoyed during the stream. Like, it's fine to not like a game, but when he's the only one who hates games that are critically acclaimed, are you fucking joking? Is this this is like unironic liberal like soy Marvel bullshit right here? Uh, when Vosh is the only one who dares to disagree uh, and, and argue that there are problems with Odyssey or Tears of the Kingdom or Red Dead Redemption Two or Diablo Four, and what are you talking about? Uh, sorry, Vosh, you have all these criticisms, but basically everyone bought the slop. So like, how can you even criticize it? Fucking come on. Listen to how listen to how fundamentally anti-intellectual this sentence is. It's fine to not like a game, but when he's the only one who hates games that are critically acclaimed and universally liked by a wide group of people, that's a him problem, not anyone else's problem. Sorry, bro. Didn't you don't you realize the thing that you're critiquing is popular? Sounds like a you problem, bro. Keep those opinions to yourself, bro. Don't you know everyone's over here enjoying uh, uh Avengers Endgame? You have critiques? Don't you see how look, look at these box number office numbers? What are you talking about? Critiques? Critiques? For a Zelda game? You you must be joking. Unironically, like soy, 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 eat the bug, live in the pod, fuck you. Wait till he learns about the working conditions at From Software. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? What what does that what does this have to do with anything? I don't even know. All right, did we do it? This person's smart and good and big brain. Oh, here's the OP again. Everything in Diablo 4 is hand-placed and nothing in Diablo 2 is, towns aside. He was specifically talking about how handcrafted maps are better in the previous sentence. I was talking about the placement of copy-paste content. Everything in Diablo 4 is... Okay, you guys don't seem to understand how video games are made, and that's fine. I'll explain it to you, okay? So here's the thing, okay? There are two tiny uh, gnomes on treadmills that are in your computer, okay? Every computer has two tiny gnomes and consoles, okay? They have the CPU gnome and the GPU gnome, all right? 
These gnomes have been beefing up tremendously, okay? The GPU gnome is running really fast, which means that the little treadmill that he's going on can render a lot of particle effects. But the CPU gnome is what I'm interested in, all right? Now that the CPU gnome is really running and really building up some energy, okay? Computers and consoles are capable of building, rendering, and holding very large maps and very large amounts of data and maintaining that and referencing that. And as a consequence of this, maps can get a lot larger. Now, if you're a development studio and you want to make a huge map, do you think that whole map is handcrafted? It's not. Do you think Fallout New Vegas maps was handcrafted? Do you think Skyrim's was? Witcher 3? Elden Ring? No. What they use are iterative tools that build out a template of a map, and then they alter that template. It's very, very common for AAA game design. Basically, you set, um, you set uh, precursors uh, that generate terrain and distribute bushes and trees, and you try to build out the world as like a base layer, uh, level one. And then you have actual humans go over it and look it over and make alterations. Now, that's how many open world games are made these days. In fact, I would say it's like probably the way most of them or almost all of them are made. Most games, historically, have not been made this way because most maps were small enough that they would just be handmade, you know? If you took a level from, say, the original Doom or, say, Thief or Deus Ex, those maps were small enough and the technology primitive enough that when they wanted to make these maps, they would have a person go in there and literally just make the map. They would just build the 3D polygons and assemble the textures and make the map, you know? So if things weren't always this way. The modern system using these iterative tools to create a base layer, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I don't think that's wrong. I do not think it's bad for a game to do that. I like time-saving efforts. I think it's good to streamline these processes. However, there's a balance that has to be struck. If you work too much with iteration and then just copy-paste content on top of it, you get a samey feeling map. Uh, if you uh, just have this massive, expanse of a map and then like make little edits to it, you know? Um, I, I don't think that's enough to really get it away from feeling samey. It's a difficult balance to strike. How do you keep a big map interesting? I would say that Tears of the Kingdom's depths fail horribly at this. The depths in Tears of the Kingdom, um, once you get the theme of the area, which is spooky, it's dark, every once in a while there's like a mining pit or like an encampment with some zonite or whatever, uh, I find that it is incredibly tedious, and you can tell that a lot of it was just designed iteratively. Um, the above world is better. Uh, I think it's uh, better in this respect, but not perfect. It still feels, in my opinion, very iterative and copy-pasted. Um, I don't have the same issue with Fallout New Vegas. I kind of do with Skyrim. Uh, it just depends game to game. What's important to understand is that even if everything in a map is hand-placed and hand-crafted, that doesn't mean the iterative tools weren't still used, and that certainly doesn't mean the stuff that's being hand-placed is good. Okay. Imagine giving a fuck about people's media taste, and our savant responds. I mean, he decided to do an entire stream giving a lecture, insecurity, insecurity, about how his audience should play what he likes. I did no such thing. Insecurity, insecurity. Instead of what they like. Kind of feel like he wants us to care. You seriously need to get over yourself, man. You are so into... I'm specifically talking about dead man posting here, okay? I'm molding enough that I'm willing to directly call them out. Stop projecting this onto me. This is your problem, not my problem. I'm not telling you what to do. I said a million times you can play whatever you want. Stop getting offended when I say the opinions that I have on the subject. Stop. Stop. You can disagree with my opinions, but stop getting mad about the fact that the opinions happen. Stop that. Please stop. Get help. Seek help. Seek assistance. He's right about Odyssey and Sunshine is the better game. I don't even think I said Sunshine is better than Odyssey, though I do think in retrospect I'm going to have more positive memories of Sunshine. There are so many things in Sunshine that I have like a visceral positive memory of, even from the last time I played it, which was only about two years ago. Whereas with Odyssey, I mostly just remember standing like next to the, the, the ship, the hat ship, and thinking like, 
okay, which moons, ha which areas of this map have I not checked for moons yet? Or like, let's do a loop about and find them, you know? Um, yeah. I guess if you like games that are rushed out the door with half the intended content and slapped with a shitload of tedious filler. Sunshine? What shitload of tedious filler? You have to get seven shri uh, shines in every map to get to the final... You mean all the blue coins? I agree the blue coins can be annoying, but seriously? Shitload of tedious filler because of the blue coin? That's it? That's pretty fucking minor compared to what Odyssey has you do. I, I, I don't get it. Regardless, it's subjectively the game that fits what he was complaining about more. It's not a no, it's not. Uh, it's not a matter of which he likes more. We have video evidence of him 100% it and having no fun, even with chat guiding him every step of the way. What the fuck are you talking about? I played Sh Sunshine on stream for a charity stream, and I had a blast. What do you mean I had no fun? What do you mean chat guided me? Why would I need to be guided every step of the way playing Super Mario Sunshine? You you just go in the level and you go to the shrine. They show you where the shine is when you enter the level. What do you mean? Why why make this up? His media takes are legitimately some of the worst I've ever seen. That's fine. He said, you shouldn't mod games unless it's the way I mod games. And no one gave him shit over that definitional double standard. What the fuck are you talking about? Find me saying you shouldn't mod games. I say stuff like, I personally don't like mods because... Why, why, what is wrong with you guys? Why are you so prone to this cognitive bias where you... You hear me say that I have feelings, and you take that as an attack against you. This stream only happened today. I My memory is bad, but it happened today. I remember the stream. Why? Why? What is it about me? that makes people invent things that I have said and get angry about it. Everyone does this. Everyone on the left does this. Everyone on the right does this. Everyone does this. Everyone does this with me. I know it's not because I'm ineloquent. I can talk fine. What is it about my delivery that leads me to say, I don't like mods. I have this problem with them. I don't like this thing. And then for people to hear, you shouldn't mod games unless it's the way I mod games. What makes A go to B? Because it's not me misspeaking. I didn't misspeak on this. Why? Witcher 3 was great as well. What a controversial opinion. Thankfully, it's one I agree with. I have never said Witcher 3 is bad. He just seems to generalize a lot when it comes to games and movies. Well, you seem to be generalizing Witcher 3 in the category of games that I don't like. When I like Witcher 3, everyone likes Witcher 3. I talked extensively about why I like Witcher 3. Why do people like Witcher 3? Probably not for the combat. Maybe some people. Not me, certainly. It's for the conversations. It was the story. It was the atmosphere. It wasn't wandering around the open world finding a bunch of monster burrows that I could destroy so I could get marginally more coin than I would get from doing literally any other activity in the game. Wandering and zigzagging back and forth between locations to make sure that I fill out 100% map completion to fix the broken brain I have that makes me want to do those things. Uh, that was not my quality time with the game. My quality time with the game was going through dialogue options and listening to my beloved baby boy Geralt talk with Everyone. And I loved it. Oh, I'm going to get mad about this one. 
Whenever this subject comes up, I'm always reminded of how odd it is that I find Vosh so entertaining to listen to, considering his seemingly complete lack of interest in or knowledge of art or media of any kind. I could fucking bury you. Everything in your mind, everything you think about art and media exists in my mind. I could run yours as a simulation without dampening my own thinking. There is nothing you've ever thought that I haven't already thought. You're too slow and too simple. It's so easy. You really think that me talking nonstop about my art preferences on stream with seemingly no self-control is evidence of a lack of interest in art or media? How? How could you possibly say that? You know what I have right behind this window? The fucking game I'm trying to make. What? What? How can you impugn me on my interest? Uh, you know, to, to not even to speak of knowledge on the subject, which again, in terms of knowledge, my I, I outpace this person handily, obviously. But in terms of interest, how could you possibly? Insane. You made that asset or you nicked it from somewhere? Oh, I nicked the um, ghost sprite. I wrote the code, though. And it's getting pretty hefty, at least by my standard. I actually did a lot today. You want to see? Look, it's not much. And, uh, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done. But I think after a lot of work, I finally have what I might consider to be a finished collision code. Just give it a moment. Here. I'll select both of the ghosts so you can see their respective colliders. And look. See? Shoves out of the way like that. Slides naturally against the one it's shoving against. It's a little stuttery because I need to add an additional step of movement for a frame after the collision, which will take a bit of work, but it's a conceptually simple problem. I'm also happy with this, see? If I right-click, it selects the unit, and it just moves right to it without actually pushing it. See? It's clean, simple, efficient. I have backup colliders to ensure that units will push each other apart if they're ever like overlapping because they've been pushed in by other hitboxes. It's functional. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, I'm also trying to make the attack animations and import them, but I'm halfway done. Right now, I'm pretty sure it glitches out tremendously if I do this. Yep, that's it. There it is. Look, the explosions don't even disappear, see? This will crash if I keep it up for too long. I haven't finished that bit, but I'll get there. Um... Yeah, Tempest, I really feel like one of the problems here, one of the consistent like hurdles I, I, I keep stumbling over when it comes to communicating these ideas or these opinions that I have is that people are so used to this hug box, you can like what you like thing. Whereas I, I, I like to assume everyone here is an adult and that like the you can like what you like thing is mostly implied, even though I do outright state it pretty often. But it just, I, I don't, you know. Slightly off topic, but this thread of nothing else yet is yet another piece of proof that Vosh's fan base are not the dogmatic cultists who gargle his spoken word like cum the way conservatives and tankies like to claim we are. If only you were. Vosh's media takes were always good, though his it's just an opinion lol bit is literal doublethink. How is it doublethink? Because before he makes any take at all, ever, he adds, and by the way, just to confirm to you absolute worm brainlet subhuman filth chatters, I am a thousand percent completely objectively correct in this, and I always am, and you cannot sway me from my principled stance that has never been seen or heard of before, and I will defend it to the death because it's morally correct. Okay, so let's address this. I do sometimes say I am objectively correct on this, but that's usually when I'm referring to an argument that's used to supplement a subjective position. So when I make an argument, like, say, um, Odyssey has way more tedium, chaff, and, and, and slop than Sunshine does, that's just a pure mathematical calculation of the amount of time you'll spend on side content, okay? That is not, like, an opinion. That's true. So the, I will say shit like that, but that doesn't mean that the overall conclusion that I arrive at, if I'm talking about preferences or whatever is objectively the case. Also, like, obviously, uh, grow up a little bit. Come on. If, if Even if I do speak with hyperbole, like, if I really say something like, if you guys watch a YouTuber, and the YouTuber is like, oh, now, I can say, with absolute certainty, 
that Call of Duty Modern Warfare is worse than Call of Duty Ghosts. Do you, do you like instantly go, ah, well, this guy's made an objective claim about a subjective statement, so I have no reason to listen to him. He's done. He's gone for. Like, immediately? Like, d d is that, you know what I mean? Like, is, is that like the framework we're operating in? Because I'm a moral anti-realist, so when I say stuff like racism is bad, I'm pulling from axioms that I would argue are uh, 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 deliberately arbitrary, and I think everyone has to do that. So, like, when I say stuff, like, in an objective fashion, I'm always doing so with the caveat that it's based upon presuppositions that have to be rooted in some kind of metaphysical leap. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't think this is a big deal. He then proceeds to make the most milk, to milk toast ass normie take imaginable like McDonald's is not actually that terrible, guys, if you get the nice fancy burgers or carefully crafted intentional world designs better than throwing 417 climbable towers in a shithole open world map. If, if it's milk toast, then why do people keep getting mad at me? What do you mean? You like I I I agree. I think a lot of the stuff that I say when it, that people get mad at me over isn't even that complex or difficult to grapple with. But like, how is that my fault? Then, as soon as one single chatter says Pepe Lafosh thinks McDoubles are actually good, he makes the literal soyjack face and says, "See, I knew you inhuman ape shitters, dude." This entire thread is full of people getting one hundred plus upvotes doing the thing you're saying I'm making up. What the fuck do you mean? What? No, no, this is gaslighting right here. This is complete fucking gaslighting. The framing of this is like, Vosh constantly says that all of his takes are objective, then he makes normie takes, and then he overreacts to chat. In a thread where people are just openly misinterpreting me. This is bullshit. Nah, bullshit. Whatever, whatever you have to tell yourself to justify your latent antagonism towards me, okay? You're, you're seething hatred, all right? Because he judges people and tells them what to do. Dead man posting. Grow up. I am not your fucking gad. Holy shit. If I say on stream, hey, I like this game, that is not me fucking pointing at you and going, oh, Vaz told me I have to... <laughs> he told me I have to play this game. He said I, all our games are retard. You can't play... <laughs> Shut... Please. Oh, my God. Just my opinion stops working if you're giving lectures. How? How does, it's just my opinion, stop working if you're giving a lecture on something? How? How, how, how does that work? You, you, you can't talk at length on a subject and it's your opinion? What? What does that mean? Lol, except a lot of the examples he gives are just complete fabrications that don't exist or ridiculous straw men. When people make comments like this, you know for a fact they have no argument. If ever a person generalizes, like, in this way, where they're like, uh, yeah, it, this is literally the donkey. Yeah, well, you're nitpicking and biased, so I win. Bye-bye. It's literally that meme. It's exactly what he deals with, too. Didn't he say he doesn't enjoy music, just anime OSTs? Um... It's not that I don't enjoy music. I just don't seek it out that much. It's not my preferred like medium of thing to listen to. I generally prefer pro podcasts. And if I am going to listen to music music, I do tend to like, um, I guess, upbeat, jazzy, or electronic stuff, which anime OSTs tend to fit into, or video game OSTs. They all sound like some Berkeley-level skilled kid, talented but failed composer in Asia, noodling around with... Wait, anime OSTs sound like some Berkeley-level skilled kid slash talented but failed composer in Asia noodling around with as many synth instruments as possible for what? This is not how anime OSTs are made. Um... That, at least not to my knowledge. You could listen to a few. Okay. Not just anime, but also games and other shows. Didn't he say he likes Electro Swing? Okay. You may think that this is unreasonable of me, 
But I'm now getting to the point where I think that like reflex hatred of Electro Swing is more Reddit than liking Electro Swing. Because I don't see anyone ever anywhere on the internet say they like Electro Swing for fear of bullying, but I do see a lot of people jump to be the first one in line to announce that it's cringe. I, I like I, I I think this is now the more Reddit position, okay? Look at them doing what they cry about you doing. Yeah, literally though, right? Um the the funny thing is the I literally only know one band that does electro swing and I said one time that I like it because I do think that it sounds good but overwhelmingly it's like music uh, or or video game or anime soundtracks or anything like Carpenter Brut has put out recently you know um, yeah that one Caravan Palace the one electro swing band that everyone has listened to and everyone liked at least at some point in time because that uh, one song has five trillion Probably for the sexy elk lady in it, uh, come to think of it, or whatever. Um, not to mention that OST is not really a genre, right? You could find a lot of different genres and intros and endings. Yes, that's true. OSTs are not typically a genre. However, there are commonalities in genre or in OSTs uh, that a person can appreciate specifically. For example, like video game OST isn't a genre, but most video game songs tend to be instrumental because uh, that way the lyrics don't clash with any of the um, uh, sound design of the game or distract or anything. I don't understand this dismissiveness of music that was literally designed to fit a mood of a story. I'm also unsure why you care about the lyrics. Okay, they're criticizing this person with the noodle comment. That's fine. Oh man, we're doing music critique critique now. Yeah, it's not only one genre, beyond fair, but when friends of mine have shown me anime or game OSTs, they all seem to have the same annoying tropes regardless of genre that makes any sense. What? And this is when they're driving me someplace or bumping it in their car. Happened a lot over the years. I didn't complain. Is this person a boomer? Okay, if you're going to listen to music that comes from anime, I agree on one thing, which is don't just listen to, like, the opening songs where they do have like the it's there are like three bands in japan that do all of the samey fucking anime songs that you know about okay all, you, if you have in your mind like a, a, a an understanding of an anime song or what it's meant to sound like it was probably made by like the same band that made a bunch of other ones because they they contract out the same music and yeah it's it, nothing never mind never mind never mind never mind it's fine. This person's fine, even if I think they're small-minded when it comes to anime OSTs. Okay. I love him for shitting on Skyrim. Such an overrated piece of shit game. True! Hating Skyrim is not even that controversial of a take. When was the last time you guys actually played Skyrim, by the way? Not re-downloaded it, played the first two hours, and then got bored, like, right after you left Whiterun. But, I mean, actually replayed the whole thing. It's actually, like, pretty fucking boring. Okay, come on. Um... I've installed 50 sex mod based. 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 Still haven't forgiven him for his god awful slasher movie dunk. When did I dunk slasher movies? Didn't I just say that I don't really think I'd be interested in them? Did I dunk them? I don't know. When did I dunk them? I'm actually asking does anyone remember when I did this? You called slashers incel bait? Oh, well, the slasher trope is that the, the, the slasher, like, targets a bunch of horny, like, college students and, and, and kills them for having sex. That's, like, a thing. I didn't make that up. That's, like, an established... That's an established trope. It's so much so that it was parodied in that horror movie that was a parody of horror movies. What was it called? The one where, where they were all in the big force field and the people were trying to do the sacrifice by playing out Scary movie? Not scary movie. Cabin in the Woods? Is it Cabin in the Woods? Okay, yeah. That one. Yeah, that's like that's a thing. I, I didn't make that up. When he admits to never seen any, and his Harrison Ford take, where he seemingly has never seen anything outside of Indiana Jones and Star Wars, zero analysis of either was found in those days. This is the problem with being a streamer, which is if you make an errant comment about something, somebody is going to take it to heart, because that comment refers to knowledge that they hold deep, like, dear and true. 
me th this was me saying like yeah harrison ford just plays harrison ford in most of his shit which to be fair he does play pretty similar acts in many of his roles not taking it back thank you i will not tempest i don't care that's the point that i don't care i'll say it but people keep it in their heart Hello, it's still a masterpiece. Thank you for mentioning Joseph Anderson at the end. This is 100% where Vosh gets his game media opinions from. Uh, I have not made any secret of the fact that I love Joseph Anderson. I have said this many times. Uh, this is not even remotely a secret. However, I have played so many games, and Joseph Anderson posts a video like once every two years. So I clearly couldn't have gotten all my takes on video games from Joseph Anderson. Also, I ended up disagreeing with Joseph Anderson, having played Super Mario Odyssey. Yep, he's basically the lefty Joe Rogan, just a guy saying things for three hours. True. His Skyrim, ta his Skyrim takes are so bad, it makes it seem like he's never played the game. Cope. Fucking cope. This person either hasn't played it, played it 12 years ago and has a poor memory of it, or plays it with mods. I played Skyrim. And I played it without mods. Twice. Full map completion both times, by the way. He thinks one of the problems with Skyrim is that it's too hard, for Christ's sake. What is happening in my Reddit? What is happening here? What the fuck is happening here? I said that the game is 20 times as difficult if you decide to go full melee or full sorcerer as opposed to going full stealth archer, which is absolutely true. At no point did I say the game was too hard. I think the difficulty is dog shit in terms of poor balancing. But like, okay. He also criticized it because melee attacks use stamina, so when it runs out you can't do anything and have to hide and wait for it to regenerate. When melee attacks in Skyrim don't use stamina. Am I getting... Am I getting gaslit right now? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is... Fuck me. Just do a melee swing. The, the stamina went down. The, the sta on the bottom right, the stamina went down. Oh, one of the things that's, like, so poorly designed in Skyrim that it's actually a fucking joke is that your stamina regenerates so incredibly slowly that it might as well be, like, fucking stopping to eat and drink after fighting a mob in WoW. Like, unlike the Souls games where the stamina is something you manage in a fight, in Skyrim you just run forward, use all your stamina, and then just, like, fucking bap at them. Only the power attacks drain stamina? Okay, yeah, but look at how slowly it comes back. The, the criticism was that it's not, like a system you engage with in melee and it's not like it, it like look down there look at how slowly it regenerates now that was a seal shield bash that was like 30 seconds of stamina regeneration gone okay so it's just the power attacks you have to drink potions. It's just a shitty system. It's just bad. It's a bad system. It's a bad game. Very little thought was put into this game's balancing. That's not a hot take. Okay. That's not a thing in that game. It is in the older Elder Scrolls games he said were good. When did I ever say the older Elder Scrolls games were good? I haven't played them. Okay.
God, I wish this entire community wasn't illiterate fucking mush. So fucking true. So fucking true. Incorrect, I dimension. My media takes are perfectly on the mark every time. All right, the purpose of my late night live stream has 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 uh, concluded. Uh, see, the thirty six new are from you people rushing in. Were there any other threads here of you guys complaining about my media takes? How can I end up debating Vosh? I'd like to debate Vosh in his video game fascist. <laughs> Oh, wait, they're not making a joke. Wait, they're not joking? Nobody wants to see that, just accept he has an opinion that isn't yours and move on. Could say the same, yet we got stunlocked. If he doesn't want anyone talking about it, then he should also stop talking about it. He w This wasn't a joke. I thought it was a meme. I thought I would have to look in the comments to find people who didn't read the fact that the original was a joke and were themselves not... Uh... Oh, I hope I hope it goes without saying, but obviously don't harass anyone in these threads. They're already redditors. That's punishment enough. Latest stream horrible quality, dude. I okay. I it, I'm such you. You guys complain about my stubbornness, but the honest truth is that if I wasn't stubborn, I wouldn't be able to do the job. Okay, it's like people like man. Why is it that all live streamers seem to be really like bullheaded and have difficulty uh, uh, like managing criticism from community? It's because most of the criticism is insane. And anytime you do anything, people complain about it because all of your fucking shit is live broadcasted. There's no editing. Or there's no filter that it goes through. Gets mad at site chat for wasting time, proceeds to waste over two and a half hours of time being smug about how his media takes are actually god tier and people are too stupid to understand instead of moving on. Seriously, just learn to move on and not get caught in a multi hour stun lock that I will get caught in stun locks for however long I want. It is my stream. I will stream about whatever I want for as long as I want, okay? You get plenty of content. There are two channels pumping out political content and one that uploads video game content. You're not starving. You're fine. If I want to talk for a while about games, I will do so. Also, the stream title literally said I had no plans for the stream. I'm waiting for the stalker media take. Stop spamming. Stalker is good. And to the person earlier who said that Pikmin is good or whatever, yeah, it's also good, obviously. Oh, here's another one. Vosh and video games. Vosh just takes on... <sighs> this is what it takes to get my subreddit to actually talk about me rather than reposting stale memes from Twitter about leftism. It's I have to talk about video games, and that's what gets them to actually focus on the content of the stream. Vosh has taken video games. He rests heavily on his preference for a curated experience. Well, yeah. But I'm also a huge fan of roguelikes, which aren't curated. Put like a thousand hours in a binding of Isaac. Okay, this person's just disagreeing. They're they're not being that offensive. Oh, here we go. I'm starting to believe Vosh just genuinely lacks fantasy, imagination. Most of the games he dislikes the most are the ones where you have to come up with your own challenges and limitations, ambitions, stories, and goals, not just for yourself, but especially for your characters being in Fuck off. The difference between this guy and me is that I understand why people might enjoy those kinds of open world, like choose your own difficulty challenges, like make your own experience. But he can't understand why I like intrinsic challenges. That's the difference. I get why he likes what he likes, but he can't understand why I like what I like. Here's, guys, here's the God's honest truth, okay? If I want to do something where I construct the goals, I'll play d and D. I'll talk to actual friends of mine and I'll play around in a world that I've created as a DM and craft stories and experiences that I'll probably remember for the rest of my life, if it goes well. When I play video games, I want structured content with structured challenges. That's what I want to get from them. 
Or, if I'm going to get something more open-ended and experiential, it'd better be a good fucking experience. Disco Elysium, Pathologic, whatever. Um, it's not about lacking imagination. I have not, Tempest. Maybe I'd change my mind if I saw it. This comic did damage to society? What? Oh, God, yeah. It's literally just this. Is Disco Elysium considered open-ended now? I think the experiences that a person... I think the... Well, Disco Elysium isn't about challenge. Disco Elysium, I think, is about, like, the emotional experience of engaging with the paths in the story that you take. It's experiential. Like, the point of Disco Elysium is to experience Disco Elysium. Uh, Outer Wilds is, like, a puzzle game, and the puzzle elements are brilliant. But I think that what most people remember from uh, from uh, Outer Wilds is the experiential element, the incredible emotional weight of the game and the world and playing through it and everything. Um, yeah, I think you can make the same argument with Death Stranding. And with open-ended stuff like um, like make your own story in Rimworld or something, I just I just don't care. I don't care of the I don't care about the little men. I just don't care. If I want to have a story with lots of little men. I'll play D&D, &D and I'll give them names, and I'll have them die tragically. That's what I'm interested in. I genuinely think this is actually kind of ableist. The he lacks fantasy and imagination thing. The funny thing is, is that autistic people actually tend to really go for simulation games. Like uh, a City Skyline or Dwarf Fortress or whatever. So, like... It, it, I actually defy my uh, neuroatypicality in this respect. Um, it's just no fun for him to clear a dungeon, build a home, or a whole city if the game doesn't communicate a clear point and or somewhat unique challenge to him. Well, yeah, I'm playing a game. Video games are games. Games have rules. That's the point. Yes, that's kind of what I'm here for. Again, I don't need like an achievement ding to happen every time I clear a dungeon. If the overall game has kind of like an aimless wandering quality, that's fine. Again, pathologic, very clear. Um, but like, yeah, overall, I do, I, I do like structured challenges, which is again typically what games are. You know, that's that's like normally what games are. His outrage at you don't understand The Sims was actually hilarious to me. I feel the same way as that chatter about City Skylines. Seems like there has to be a fail state and a clear goal for V to be happy with the game, but some games are just layers of systems. God, I literally just said I don't like simulation games. That's all I said. I said that I don't like them, not that they're bad. I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with them. I don't think they're slop either. City Skyline isn't slop. That's not, it's not, I, the slop is what I'm saying, like, the, the, the developers are wasting your time with, like, filler content, the way they design stuff. But uh, a, a, a simulation game isn't slop. It's just not my thing. Like, if Bosch thinks money is the main constraint in city skylines, he hasn't built a city large enough to experience a real traffic jam. I've filled the map in city skylines. Why are you? Why do you people keep assuming I haven't played the games you've played? I've played every game all of you have played and better. Every game this person, every game all of you combined have played. I've played it, okay? I've played the games, all right? While you were out there partying and drinking, I was studying the Blade, all right? I've played the games. All I said was that you can leave the game on overnight and have infinity money, which is true. That is true. I did, what, what does that have to do with traffic? Ugh. Have you played Kenshi? Well, that's a simulation game, so no. See, this person gets it. Vosh is pretty similar. He's making a game, writes fan fiction, original ideas, runs D&D games all the time. So he's imaginative, doesn't need another medium to facilitate it. It's like, why pay money to imagine my own adventures, but I can already do that for free? I don't think that it's better for me to do it, like the way that I do it or anything. If people enjoy making stories out of simulation games, I think that's based. Lots of people like simulation games, and I think it's pretty cool what they do with it. It's just not my thing, you know? I, I just, I it, different interests, different things. I think it's just him getting super defensive about what he wants for a game. I'm not getting defensive. I'm being highly offensive. Thank you.
All right, are we out? Am I free? Or is there going to be another thread? Hot take. Vosh has mostly good media takes. Chat loves their open world slop. True! That's pretty true. That's true. That's pretty true. Am I free? I think I'm free. Quick Vosh, make another take to stir the pot. I, I, I it's 3 a.m. So anyway, when the newspapers ask you, please tell them that I wasn't mad. Okay? You'll do that for me, right? You'll tell the newspapers that I wasn't mad. You'll let them know. <laughs> Tempest. Um, what's, a, what's a final take that I can have here? What's the final take that I can have? Um, okay. I think that people like what they like. And if you like a particular kind of media, I think you should consume it. Because if it makes you feel good, that's good. That's great. Um, however, I do think that there is moral worth in an attempt to cultivate good taste. Or to put it another way, if a person only likes soap operas and reality television, and that makes them happy, authentically happy, and they're not stupid, that just happens to be what they like, you know? I think that it's morally good for them to try to expand their taste potentially by trying new and interesting things. Because I think doing that, I think that process uh, encourages uh, introspection, uh, intellectual growth, you know? I think it's good to take the consumption of media seriously, if that makes any sense, you know? We tend to think of these things as like leisure, but in reality, we're heavily defined by our interests. And if our interests are, you know, uh, diverse and refined and considerate, and, and you know, if, if they prompt thinking, then I think that generally is better for a person than otherwise. It's not, it's, it's like, um, it's not like an essentialist thing. It doesn't mean that you're you're wrong for watching reality TV. A thing that I have watched and enjoyed. I've watched multiple seasons of The Bachelor and Bachelorette and Bachelor in Paradise because I find them very fun to watch with vermin because we're like scream laughing over the TV. It's not, it, it, I don't think it's bad to do that. Um, I just think it's good to be, you know, yeah, thoughtful to, to try new things and stuff. And to think about why you like the things that you like. I think that's really, really important too, because that's good for like political stuff as well, right? Like, well, why do you like this media? You know, maybe it's meaningful in, in, in some way uh, and, and could help you arrive at better positions. And try to find like, you know, if you don't really like the thing that you like, maybe you should try to like something else. A good example of this would be like, I don't know, League of Legends. There are a lot of forever games, games that you could theoretically play forever because they're like multiplayer online or whatever else um or they have like battle pass stuff you know anything like that uh where a lot of people will play this stuff and it'll turn into like the convenient thing to do when they have free time but it won't really make them happy you know sometimes they'll be happy a, a good win or whatever but i've seen so many people who just kind of like the average happiness fades away and they're kind of living for the little bumps that they get of happiness when something good happens like they get a win or some like cool play or whatever but it gets less engaging and this is what i mean by slop right um an individual game of, of valorant is not slop i've never played it i'm sure it's a well-designed game competitively uh but the experience of relentlessly playing valorant can be I think that World of Warcraft raids are some of the best designed group content ever made in video gaming history. I think that in many cases, they are stellar, like artistically excellent. But the majority of the time that you spend playing World of Warcraft, even if you're a high level raider, 
isn't raiding. There's a lot of grind that you have to keep up with there. And even if you like the bits that you like, you have to understand that when you engage with media like that, you take it as a whole, as an aggregate. Same with any other game, Destiny 2 or Fortnite or whatever else, any game you play a lot of. And when you're at that point, I just beg of you, because I've seen so many people burn out on video games when they hit like 25 or something, and they only play like two video games, you know? Try something new, because there are literally tens of thousands of indie games that are free or cheap, and a lot of them have really interesting experiences, and I just think it would be worthwhile to give it a shot, you know? The stuff that I get most upsetty spaghetti about is usually when I see trends in, in, in the gaming industry, especially in like AAA games, which have the largest audiences, towards cynical methods of retaining a player base rather than like keeping people genuinely engaged. You do not have to look like long to find people who play Ubisoft games and complain about the way Ubisoft maps are structured. You don't have to spend much time at all looking on the Diablo forums and find... You know what? I'll just bring it up right here. Diablo. And if I search in the Diablo subreddit, map, you should get lots of people complaining about... Yep. There we go. The top two that come up. Liz, please don't force us to rediscover the entire map again. We think the removal of the transparent map. Map is huge. Okay, a lot of this is just complaining about the fact that there's no map overlay. Which, to be fair, the lack of a map overlay when the map is that big is genuinely insane. Um, Shane, the handmade open world map is so dominated by whips of curves. Maybe I didn't search the right thing. There were way more people complaining before. This whole subreddit has been people complaining. In fact, top past month. Really miss big dungeons, multiple floors, and zero objectives. Where was the stuff where they were complaining about the map? Hmm. I suppose it would support my point a little bit better if I was able to easily find the threads where I saw thousands and thousands of comments of people complaining. Actually, come to think of it, considering the fact that this is a Blizzard game subreddit, it's not impossible that they would delete unfavorable threads. Um, though I don't think that's what happened here. There are people complaining. I just don't like it when developers adopt strategies for wasting people's time. You know? Yeah, I know, Quixote. I saw the first ten times. Thank you. Anyway, there are a lot of ways to do this stuff. Um, there are a lot of ways to do this stuff. With regards to, like, um, Skinner Box mechanics. There are gotcha games. There are battle passes. There are, um, like, grind mechanics and time-gated content. There are maps that are made overly large with copy-pasted content. One of the things that really gets me is when co uh, 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 collecting craftable items becomes menial and tedious. That really gets me. Horizon Zero Dawn is my biggest negative experience with that one in particular. Because if you have a crafting system, make craftable materials interesting to get. If you just... If you just need like a ton of an item to do fighting and you're crossing a field and there's like 50 of the thing that you can get and they respawn when you recross it and you just have to zigzag all this does is waste time that's it um our brains are designed to light up when we add a number to a stack of things we already have in our inventory it's it, it's how our brains are designed we were meant to do that um and this fixation on rpg mechanics uh and 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 everything being a you know, looter, shooter, craft, customize, whatever. It's just ways of building out systems that artificially inflate the uh, time and effort it takes to do anything rather than making the content actually interesting. Do you think Tears of the Kingdom suffers from the same crafting issue? Well, Tears of the Kingdom, you only collect stuff for, for like food, basically, with like a couple, because uh, it's not really a big deal to collect stuff from a monster who's been killed, because that's kind of fun, like running around collecting the stuff right there. Um... No, I don't have a big issue with that. 
I do have huge issues with the way that food and health works in Tears of the Kingdom, but not necessarily because of that in particular. Probably not on stream, Ronan. Artemis behind me again, isn't he? He's been such a little leaf boy. Yeah? 